I'm delighted to say Glenn joins us now. Welcome to France Cat. Thank you so much. Nice there, to see you. There you were singing Medusa, originally recorded with Trapeze yeah. a little while ago. Now, you've appeared on many <laughs> rock albums. You've also done solo albums. Mm -hmm. You've now formed a new group called Black Country Communion. Yes. It's described as a devastating head-on collision between American and British rock influences, a true supergroup that delivers a titanic rock experience. How did it come about? I'd like to meet the guy that wrote that. <laughs> um, it came about with Joe Bonamassa, the guitar player, and I had dinner three years ago, became friends and decided we would make some music together in some kind of format. We didn't know it was going to be a band at the time. We just started to hang out and just eat some dinner and, and, and write some songs. And about seven or eight months ago, we decided to form a band, bringing in Jason Bonham, son of Le John Bonham from Led Zeppelin, and Derek Sherinian, keyboard player from Dream Theater, to make it a band. And people are calling it a supergroup. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great, great rock statement. Now, four massive musicians together. Ever have a bit of a power struggle, or does it work well? No, I mean, you, you got two guys from the black country, uh, Jason and myself, and Joe's a virtuoso. We all know about Joe Bonamassa, the young guitar slinger, the new blues titan, and Derek Sherinian, a progressive keyboard player. It's a great mixture of talent, really. It's a, it's a great uh, feeling to be in a bunch of guys, but play with a bunch of guys like this. Now, you've made and worked on dozens of albums. Yep. What are you trying to do in particular with this one? I'm planting a rock flag here. I mean, my career is, I mean, I've always been a rock singer, but I've been influenced by many kinds of rock things. But now I want to go back to the originator of what I did when I first started out, which is basically British rock, you know. And uh, for the, the last third of my career, I'm going to be sort of doing what I sh set out to do in the 70s, which is rock music. You are pretty prolific. You've contributed to many people's albums. But from your own standpoint, are you pushing yourself on or does it, is it just coming out and you need to have an avenue for it? You know, I think it's both. I mean, I'm a workaholic, we just told you that before, and, and I, I just like to keep busy. But I, rather than do many different things and to do that, I, I want to be focused now on what I really want to do, and that's being a band and to play big arena rock tracks on stage. And that's why I'm here. Now let's go back a little bit in time to the days of Deep Purple. Tell us about your initial feelings when Deep Purple asked you to play with them. I was in a band called Trapeze from the black country, funny enough. Um, and we were playing the Whiskey A Go Go in LA in 73. And I noticed that we played there for one week. And I noticed each night a, a member of Deep Purple would show up. And I didn't realize they were courting me. And this went on for another year where they'd show up in London or New York. And I was so naive and didn't realize they were actually getting ready to ask me to join. And, and at the time, they were huge. They were a massive rock band. And we made an album when I joined called Burn, which was a number one album around the world. So for a lad from the British Midlands, it was a great, great honor. Do you ever see Deep Purple, I'm sure you're asked this a lot, but reuniting or doing something again you together? Know, I think if you would ask a rock fan what band would you like to see get back together again, I think a lot of rock fans would say Deep Purple Mark III, which with Blackmore, Coverdale, Hughes, Lord and Pace. So, would it happen? I honestly don't know. I really don't know. Would you like it to? Um, for closure reasons, I think it would be great. I think it would be great to, to hang out and play with my friends again, m mainly for that reason. Now, it seems, if we look back, that your career is really one of highs and lows. You had a brief, well, not that brief, but a period in the 70s and 80s where you had you were involved with drugs and oh, alcohol. Can't <laughs> escape it. I mean, you know, I, I think it's well known, the fact that I've survived that. I don't remember the 1980s. I really don't. I, I know I did a few albums and I did a few shows, but it's a period of my life where I think, you, you, you know, I think it's good for me to actually try and remember the things I wasn't proud of. I didn't grow up to be a drug addict, if you will, or to be an alcoholic. But um, I fell prey to the, those kinds of things when I was very young. I didn't grow up to be that, but I'm glad it's all over with 20 years later. I'm, I mean, obviously 20 years now, I've, I've got this great lifestyle and healthy attitude, and, and I, I try to be a messenger to other people that have that disease. 
And so you think it was a bit of a catalyst to where you are now? Did it yes. sort of shape your life? I believe, I might be saying there are no mistakes in God's will. I believe that we are here for a reason today and why we've, the, road, the road we've chosen to, to walk down. And I think that I'm here for a reason and, and there's no mistakes for me. I'm here today and, and you know, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to go. Now, you are ready to go. Any musicians um, that you would still like to work with? Because you've, you've done the rounds, I think it's fair to say. Anyone still it. out there who you think, oh, I'd like to work with them? I think I've done, done them all. <laughs> I think, you know, I've played with all the big guns. And for me, Eve, I think it's most important for me to, to play with the people I like. I've got to hang out and live with. And that's why I'm in this band, because we're all good friends. Let's just say that I don't particularly want to work with people that are not nice, and I shan't name names, but I have no time for that. I want to work with loving and nurturing people. I'm a, just a happy guy. So finally, I just wanted to ask you one thing. As well as um, Black Country Communion, if someone is tuning in now, a new fan, maybe doesn't know your music, you've made so many records, yep. the list is endless. Yeah. Which one would you recommend to people to buy, to listen to, to get the essence of Glenn Hughes? Well, Black Country Communion for sure, but I think it, before that, I think you could probably go to Soul Mover from 2005 to get sort of a, a, a bird's eye view of, of what I'm doing. So I think that's a good, good one, Soul Mover. So you're on, the, on tour now, you're going back to the UK. Yes. What's it like returning home? To see my family is amazing. Uh, I'm the only child, so it's great to go up to the Black Country to see my family, and uh, I'm over there quite a bit. That's all we're saying about England then. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, you've got to go back to the, where your roots are, and that's where I'm from. Okay, Glenn, we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us here on Fox Cat. Thank you so much. Just to remind you there, Glenn's new band is called Black Country Communion. Definitely worth a listen, or some of the best stuff on there. That's it for today's Culture Show. Thanks for watching, and remember, all of our shows are on our website at france24.com. We also have a Facebook page, so please become a fan. I'll see you tomorrow.